As you mentioned, my name is Jeff Aaron, and we're the MIST team, and we're now a, a Juniper company. So we're really excited to, to be here. This is actually our, our third MFD, and um, as you guys know that have been here prior, this is always an event that we hold back and try to launch and give new announcements, right, to show the latest and greatest in the product and the technology and the architecture, and the same is going to be true for this event. Before we get there, though, uh, you know, a little bit of a background, you know, for those not familiar with MIST, you know, our whole um, raison d'etre is all about leading an AI for IT. So it's all about you know, using automation, uh, using insight, you know, AI-driven to make Wi-Fi just more predictable, more reliable, more measurable, and ultimately getting towards the goal of self-driving, but also giving visibility into the user experience so you can do things like uh, indoor location services. And we'll give some examples around that. Um, by way of introduction, as I said, my name is Jeff Aaron. I run marketing here. We're going to have a bunch of other speakers come up that are obviously great speakers that you guys all know. There's Sudhir Mata, who's our head of products. There's Bob Friday, who's our CTO. Uh, we're going to bring Wes Purvis up as well, who's uh, on our product management team. And we're going to talk about a, a variety of different topics. Before we get to that, though, I just wanted to spend about five minutes doing three things. One, talking about what we did at last MFD. Second, talk about what happened since MFD. And then third, I'll give you a little bit more insight into the agenda, and then I'll hand it off to these guys. So last MFD was an interesting one because, uh, again, we felt it was really important for us to kind of do a little bit of a double click on this whole AI thing. You know, we know that there's a lot of AI washing out there. And uh, you know, we're one of the vendors that were the first to really embrace this and, and put in the technology. And so last MFD, uh, we spent some time really doing three things. One, talking about customers, real folks that are using this technology to, again, automate their Wi-Fi or do location services. So we talked about you know, PetSmart, for example, the VA administration, Disney Swan and Dolphin, um, and Verizon offering a managed service, as well as some others. We talked about you know, one of the top e-commerce uh, companies out there, uh, et cetera. And uh, make no bones about it, this session we're going to do a lot of use cases and sprinkle a lot of examples as well. So stay tuned for that because we've seen a lot of cu uh, customer momentum and that's going to continue to be exciting. The other thing is uh, last MFD we spent a lot of time talking about architecture and in particular microservices. You know, we talked about the difference between a monolithic software embedded code base versus a distributed architecture, you know, primarily in the cloud and what that means in terms of resiliency and reliability and overall just scalability. And we're going to spend a lot of time here as well because we recently launched a new product called Mist Edge, which takes that microservices concept and actually does bring it on premise. So you get kind of the public cloud experience on the campus. And so we announced that towards the end of June, and we're going to talk about that and give some demos and talk about how that enables us to broaden our campus experience and our campus customer base, which we're looking to do. Quick question before you change. Um, what would you say the percentage is for um, Wi-Fi versus the VBLE? Yeah, so great, great customer, uh, great question. So a lot of customers obviously do different licenses and merge, but if you did pure Wi-Fi deployments, it's about 60, 70% versus BLE um, that are just straight up BLE. Thanks. Yep. Um, and then the last area is focusing on the AI piece and how you use AI as the underpinnings. So last MFD, we did a couple things. One is we introduced you to Marvis, which is our AI virtual network assistant. And we did some demos about how you can ask in natural language queries and get answers. And what we're going to do is show you what we call Marvis 3.0. You know, since we're a SaaS solution, there really are no releases. But we call this 3.0 because we're really on our third generation of algorithms. So we're going to show you things like our, our latest anomaly detection, which is uh, almost zero false positives now. We're going to show you a new feature like Marvis um, Actions, which takes all that root cause analysis and actually gives you specific human actions that you can take and then test those to make sure it actually had the intended occurrence. So again, that's a new feature that we're announcing right here at MFD. Um, as well as we're going to talk about, last time we showed you some of our SLEs, like on the WAN side, we're going to show you how this whole Juniper acquisition, we're now taking this to more of the wired environment. So we're bringing in things like wired switch health into our, our dashboards as well, so you can do both wired and wireless management from the MIST platform. So some pretty uh, exciting things ahead. So this has been an interesting year, an exciting year for MIST. You know, as Tom pointed out, we did um, get acquired by Juniper uh, in April of this year. Um, so what's interesting is, you know, there's really two things to point out in that. So one is it, it, it married two solutions that really were a nice fit, right? You know, Juniper needed a wireless piece in their portfolio, and ultimately we had needed a wired solution, switching and routing. So it really combines that with out overlap into a nice end-to-end -end solution. But more importantly, it helps us deliver on the vision of that AI-driven enterprise. So the goal is not just to have a wireless and a wired solution, but really to unify that using an AI underpinning. So you can do the service levels across the whole domain. You can do the root cause analysis and the Marvis actions across that. So that's the ultimate vision, and that's what's exciting here. What mo many people don't realize is that Juniper is one of the fastest growing enterprise companies with double-digit growth in the, uh, in, the, in the campus space. 
And obviously on the miss side, we're seeing you know, exceptional traction. Now, again, we know that there's incumbents out there that have larger market share, but in terms of quarter over quarter, year over year, customer count and revenue growth, we're the fastest growing company. So the switch level integration um, that you're talking about, um, being able to uh, expand visibility deeper into switching infrastructure, expected to be a Juniper switching platform only feature? No, and that's what we're going to talk about, actually. The first thing that we're going to show today, the wire health is actually on any switching platform. And then what we can talk to um, is how ultimately we get additional benefit to the Juniper platform. Okay. Yeah, good question. Um, and then, uh, again, what I was talking about is some of the momentum here. And uh, again, I can go through some of the examples, but I think for me what's the most interesting is that top line. Because it's not just about quantity, it's about quality. You know, three of the Fortune 10 have made a decision to move their production networks to MIST. And we're not talking about pilots, we're not talking about one office, we're talking about full-scale deployments. You know, in warehouses, in, in, in retail stores, um, in, in campus environments, they're switching to MIST. And so that's a, a kudos to what we're doing and a big testament to the fact that they are looking at some of these underpinnings and say, it's time for a change, it's time to switch away from the incumbencies. And so we're excited about that. Um, and again, it, it resonates too in terms of actual uh, 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 customer reviews. And again, so these are some of the peer reviews that went out there. And you can see when, when actually the customers get surveys and they have to vote on their vendors, Mist and Juniper constantly gets you know, high marks, which we're really proud of. But this also points to something else that we're also going to spend a lot of time on today. The AI underpinning that we're going to talk about isn't just about the product itself, it's also about the way we deliver support. So Bob, actually the first session is going to actually talk about AI-driven support and how we've changed that model. Well, with Marvis, we actually do proactive notifications. In some instances, proactive RMAs. We've actually eliminated tier one and tier two support, where if a trouble ticket does come in, it actually goes right to the experts to eliminate that whole Comcast model of going through a phone chain to get to someone that actually acknowledges the fact that there's a problem. So we're going to talk about that framework as the first step uh, into how we've, how we've revolutionized that. Then we're going to move into, again, as we said, Marvis 3.0. So we'll show you the Marvis actions. We'll show you our anomaly detection, our latest rev of that, as well as some of that wired health um, that, that, that we talked about, Sam. Uh, then we're going to bring Wes up, and he's going to talk about uh, what we're doing around Wi-Fi 6. Uh, you saw that you know, the Wi-Fi 6 was running when you guys walked in. So we'll talk about that. Then we will talk about that Mist Edge product we talked about, which is about bringing microservices on-prem to help us go after those, more of those campus environments that uh, traditionally are a little bit more cloud adverse. Uh, and then lastly, uh, uh, time permitting, we'll have uh, Bob come up and do a location update. You know, someone at, 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 at MIST has a... We are uh, going to do a location a, update. They have a side bet with Bob, 100 bucks that he's not going to be able to get to it. So um, <laughs> rather than me influence this bet, <laughs> let me hand it over to Bob so you can move along your journey and, and maybe win that 100 bucks. But first, uh, you know, I want to thank everyone for being here. You know, it's great to be at the fourth uh, annual Mobility Field Day event. Um, it's great to see all the familiar faces, great to see the new faces. You know, for me personally, this is my third Mobility Field Day event since I've started in MIST four years ago. Um, and I think in this section here, we really want to kind of give you an update of where we are on what we call the Marvis journey. And maybe give a little bit of an introduction to those who are new to Marvis and MIST. Um, you know, similar to the Watson team, right? The team that actually spent five or six years building Watson to play championship Jeopardy. MIST has been on a similar mission since its inception to really kind of build a solution that can find root causes and answers to poor mobile user net experiences, right? That has been the mission we've been on, building the foundation of what we need to actually accomplish that. And when you think back, right, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago when I started Airspace and that whole adventure, that was a paradigm where we were here trying to sell network equipment and some sort of management tools to help you manage these networks, right? You know, with Marvis and AI and ML, we're really kind of moving to a paradigm now of where we're here to help you manage the end-to-end -end user experience, you know, whether it's your guest, your employees, or your IoT devices. And that's really the power of AI and ML that's really disrupting the industry we're in. Um, you know, when you look at where we are with Marvis right now, uh, for those who know me, you know, I make a barrel of wine every year. You know, my mantra is, you know, great wine starts with great grapes, great AI starts with great data. You know, and that is one of the reasons we chose to build an access point at MIST, to make sure we have control of the data we need to answer those mobile experience questions. Uh, for those who are new, you know, we started the adventure with what we call SLE metrics. Um, you know, that was really around getting the data we needed from the AP around user state experiences, right? Getting that data out. What you're going to see today in today's session, and Sadir is going to show you, is really what we're ingesting new data into Marvis, right? And this is bringing more wire data and more events into Marvis that really lets us get to 
better root causes, better answers with more granularity. The other thing you'll see in today's session is really when you look under the hood of these AI solutions, what you really find is there's a bunch of different algorithm models running in parallel to get those answers. You know, so the other thing you'll see is we've added a whole bunch of new frameworks. We've added something we call time event framework. Uh, this is really a framework that allows us to do better correlation, temporal correlation across different network entities, you know, like anomaly detection and configuration. Uh, this is addition to the framework we introduced last year, which was that SLE framework. That was a framework that let us do what we call mutual information. Right, that's what allowed us to start to correlate poor user experience with network, different network features, right? Whether it's your mobile device or operating system, trying to figure out what's causing that poor user experience. And when you look inside the Marvis Data Science Toolbox, uh, well, today, as Jeff mentioned, we'll be talking about anomaly detection, something we're very proud of, something we've actually got to the point now where we think anomaly detection is actually going to be useful uh, in our space, and a little bit about log mining on finding root causes of log file. And additionally, finally, you'll be seeing kind of the new face to Marvis. You know, last year we were here, it was about helping troubleshooting, right? Helping people troubleshoot user problems uh, quickly and easily. You know, what you'll see in this session is really what we call our action framework. And this is really adding that south step, to, that first step to self-driving, right? This is gonna be allowing the IT administrator to actually turn those root causes into actions that Marvis can take automatically without any help. But first, I think, you know, the most exciting thing, you know, we are here to kind of announce and probably share with you is really this challenge, this claim that MIST is now the, the first and only wireless infrastructure vendor that's using its own AI ML engine to support every enterprise customer we have. Every support ticket, every troubleshooting support ticket that comes into MIST, we're actually using Marvis to try to answer that question. And you look at what the power of this is, you know, one of the reasons I left a very large company to start in this, you know, when I started the vision of right, trying to build Marvis, it became clear to me that you really needed to build a modern cloud stack first, right? To build this AI ML solution, we really needed a modern cloud stack that could ingest a lot of data and take action real time. And that really required a blank sheet of paper. Uh, and that's one, one of the core reasons to start MIS. The other thing that I found in building Marvis is it's similar to that cloud ops model, right? When people start trying to put scalable, reliable apps on clouds, they quickly realized there had to be something very tightly coupled between the development team and the operations team, right? And that's where that term DevOps came around, right? You know, it became clear to need development and operations working very closely to get those cloud solutions to actually work. You know, what you find with building these AI solutions you really need your customer success team and your data science team working side by side, right? And that's an organizational paradigm shift. And that's another reason that's very hard to do in a large company. And another reason is actually it's easier to start with a blank sheet of paper at MIST. And that is the fundamentally paradigm shift when you actually start to look at this AI ML technology is we're starting to support our customers differently. Right, you know, during my airspace days, it was about I'm here to sell you a box. Here are some management tools. Good luck. You know, I hope you figure it out. Um, so, Bob, along those lines, uh, does AI self-diagnose code bugs and such? Yeah, we'll talk about that. So, you'll see a new element. We talk about AP Health. You know, so we're getting down to the point, right? We, as a vendor, we know if we have a bug in our our device, right? We know if there's something wrong with that piece of hardware. You know, so we're getting down to what we call proactive RMAs. We can detect and find those and send them back. Um, yeah, so that is the beginnings of that paradigm shift, right? You know, I am here to help you manage that mobile internet experience from the device to the internet. Uh, I really don't care if it's my AP causing the problem or some other route switch. My goal is to help you get to the root cause and the answer of that poor, that poor experience. So this is probably the one thing I take away from the session is really kind of internalize this paradigm shift because uh, this is going to affect our industry overall. People, the expectation, what people expect from their vendors is fundamentally going to change going forward. Now we have been using Marvis, as I said, for the last year to answer every support ticket coming into MIST. So since we met, I think was it last August or September we met last time? September or so, 
So for the last year, you know, what this graph shows you is these red bars show you how often we had to go to the access point to answer a question. You know, so when you're building some AI ML solution, the first step is you have to get the data necessary to answer that question into the cloud. For the last year, you can see we've kind of gone from a, you know, where 50% of the time we had to go to the access point to try to get the answer or get the data we needed, to now we're down to less than 5, 10% of the time we have to go to the access point. So now we've got the data we need in the cloud to answer the question. These green and blue bars show you how often Marvis got the right answer. And the blue shows you if we didn't get quite the right answer, did we have the data? Did we get the data in front of the IT administrator? Right, so this is highlighting that speed to resolution. How often did we actually help an IT administrator get to the answer quickly? And with that, I'm gonna have Sadir come up and Sadir is gonna to start to bring us to an actual demo of what, how, how our customers are actually using Marvis. Yeah, no, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Sudhir Mata, Product Management, MIST. Uh, uh, again, first of all, super excited about, uh, I think one of the things that Jeff did not cover uh, on the slide there is uh, we've had exponential growth. Uh, we've had phenomenal success in the marketplace. W uh, one of the numbers that uh, supposedly Jeff's not very proud of here, uh, is, is we have a customer now that is deploying about uh, 55,000 APs, 1,000 APs every night uh, on the MIST dashboard, right? Speak of scale and, and, and just the veracity type of deployments are out there. Now, you take that exponential growth and, and you say, okay, so how is, are you doubling and tripling your MIST support team? How is that translating? Is Marvis actually adding value to the engineering organization? Here's the, the actual graph of the same time period where we've had you know, near exponential growth on, on organizations we're supporting, APs we're deploying, and, and customers we're supporting to uh, you know, the the support ticket volume is primarily linear, if not actually almost flattening out, right? Why? Customers are able to use Marvis to actually solve problems before they even open a support ticket. So what, what is happening is, if Marvis can solve the, uh, the problem and customers can solve it themselves, the problem for our support team is we get harder and harder tickets. So of course, as this gra graph uh, keeps going to the right, the problem space becomes harder and harder. And this is where I think if, you've, if any of you have watched uh, the journey of IBM Watson, fascinating journey. The journey journey of how AlphaGo beat, uh, you know, won the uh, Go game, right? It is an incredible, you know, problem space that becomes harder as you go towards the end. That's what we are on.